This product allows people on their desktop to capture a million points of measurement and put it into their computer. With a, a device like this, you can make anything and you can make one of everything. We're in this for the big picture. We're swinging for the fences. The people changing the way we live. Meet the innovators right at 9 and 11 p.m. only on Bloomberg. Yeah, it was right out here that Talk show host Jay Leno is a diehard car collector. For 20 years, he's been restoring antique autos in this shop in Burbank. Summer is old as 1906. Well, this car here is a, is a, a Duesenberg Model J. It's a very rare car. There aren't many of them. It scans it on the scanner. That's what it does. Last year, he bought a 3D scanner, which can capture the dimensions of any object. Then he uses his 3D printer to create those objects. Uh, we needed a couple of these to hold the headlights. Now, you're not going to find any. There aren't any other cars that are similar. Uh, this bolts to the fender. It's a stress member. It's an important part of the car. So we realized using the 3D printer, we could design it on the computer, make it in plastic, fit it, see that it worked, and then go make it in metal. Leno says 3D scanners and printers are bringing cars back from the dead. They let him reproduce parts that he might not have been able to find. In the old days, you'd have to go to a pattern maker. He would have to make a pattern based on the information you gave him. It gets very expensive, and you get it back. If it doesn't fit, well, you've wasted a lot of time and a lot of money, and he built it to your specifications, so it's your fault. His new toys are making many of his old ones obsolete. This is a perfect example of the way it used to be. You start with a huge block of metal, and you just keep whittling away and whittling away. I mean, this is all metal and all these cans until you make the part that you need. That's sort of the old school way to do it. With a 3D scanner, anyone can capture the exact dimensions of a part. You see these red lights, these bands going across here. They're actually laser light contours, and they're measuring about 50,000 points a second on the surface of that. Within a few minutes, we'll have a million points measuring exactly what the shape of that object is. And with a 3D printer, you can literally print out a prototype. This is a part off a steam car. This is called a feed water heater. This was originally made of aluminum. And after the car is in 1907, and after over 100 years of use, it was just falling apart. Now, this would have been $6,000 to send to a pattern maker to do. And we had it made, this made in aluminum, the whole deal, for $200. This is a brand new part for a 1907 car that does not exist anymore. There are no new parts anywhere. Remember the movie Wall Street where they're talking on these kind of cell phones? Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, all right, I'll call. I got my portable phone right here. And that, now you laugh at that. I mean, that's where it's yeah. going. Mark Knighton is the CEO of Next Engine, which makes 3D scanners. His company has brought the size of a machine down from a closet to a bread box, and the cost from upwards of $100,000 to $3,000. You can see sort of the, the atoms that are there that we've produced, but behind those atoms, there are bits. There's software, six million lines of code that make the thing do what it does. There's a lot of patents in this technology, a lot of uh, intellectual property that enables it being made. This was a metal chain we put in and we scanned it. You'll see it's as thick and as loose or as tight as the original chain was. And you didn't make it in links and then have to put it together. It copies the chain exactly with all the gaps in between exactly as the original chain was. And it's not just reproduction. Once you bring the scan into design software, you can manipulate the object however you want. This is the headlight holder. And let's say when it was made, let's say over the years, oh, they kept cracking here because of stress of going up and down over bumps. Well, you could take this part and using the computer, design it to be much heavier and thicker in this area. So it would still be an original copy. You would just have a little more metal in there. So you can actually improve on things. All around his shop, antique cars are getting a new lease on life with 3D printed parts. You're not going to find one of these door handles. So you take it off, you scan it, and you make an exact copy. And nobody can tell the difference. People keep saying, well, give me another example of what you made. Well, you can make whatever you want. It makes an exact copy of whatever you want. That's the fascinating thing about it. And people go, well, how about this? Yes, yes, it will do that.
Of course, 3D scanners and printers are not just for cars. They are revolutionizing manufacturing by changing supply chain relationships and speeding time to market. It allows us to make some things, feel it, and say, you know, that doesn't feel right, and carve it a little bit, scan it, put it back into the printer, print it again, and refine it. But to do that all within hours and days instead of months. And that changes the entire uh, characteristic of product development and it allows us to make much higher quality products but to make them with less capital cost and in less time. 3D printing companies may have begun by speeding up the design process but now they're moving beyond just prototyping. The people changing the way we live. Meet the innovators Friday at 9 and 11 p.m. only on Bloomberg.